Warm greetings. Today is Tuesday, May 27, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the updated forecast for a low-pressure system that has been designated as Invest 90 and is currently located to the south and southwest of Mexico. It has nearly a 100% chance of cyclonic development over the next 48 hours. And although it is currently expected to dissipate before posing a direct threat to Mexico, it is still important for residents of Colima, Nayarit, Jalisco, Sinaloa, and Baja California Sur to monitor its evolution in case of unexpected changes. If we switch the satellite animation to visible satellite imagery, you can see that this afternoon Invest 90 appears much more organized with good vorticity. However, the National Hurricane Center has noted that it still does not have a closed surface level circulation, which is why it has not yet been classified as a tropical cyclone. It is very likely that it will continue organizing tonight, and it appears that by tomorrow it could develop into Tropical Depression 1 or Tropical Storm Alvin. You can also see some instability affecting parts of southern Mexico, which is associated with some outer bands. However, the area of heaviest rainfall remains south of Mexico. In the latest tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center, they give it nearly a 100% chance of developing into a tropical depression within the next 48 hours. Now we will analyze its future trajectory and how its intensity may fluctuate. Overall, note that the specialized track models show good agreement that it will maintain a west-northwest motion over the next 48 hours. Eventually, it should turn more to the north and head toward areas of Sinaloa or Nayarit, but don't be alarmed by these tracks, as it appears the system will dissipate before reaching the Mexican coast. That's precisely what the intensity projections are showing us, that during the next 48 to 72 hours, strengthening of the future tropical storm Alvin is expected. The consensus is that it will become a moderate to strong tropical storm between Thursday and Friday, and then begin to weaken rapidly. In about 4 to 5 days, that is, over the weekend, there is a possibility that it could dissipate before reaching Mexico. Although it's less likely, we still can't completely rule out the chance that it strengthens into a Category 1 hurricane. But that intensification would need to occur while it remains well offshore from the Mexican coast. It's important that we stay alert and monitor its movement, because if there's any shift eastward or rightward in its track, that could influence its intensity if it gets closer to Mexico. However, that scenario is currently very unlikely, and the highest probability is that it will remain a tropical cyclone over the open waters of the Pacific. As of today, projections suggest it will dissipate before reaching the coast of Jalisco or Nayarit. Now I'd like to briefly explain why it's expected to strengthen rather quickly over the next 48 to 72 hours. First, take a look at this image showing upper-level winds in the atmosphere, where we can clearly see that an anti-cyclone has established itself near or over the system's center of circulation. This allows for good outflow at upper levels, which in turn creates favorable conditions for intensification. In fact, this is the main reason why the system is currently undergoing rapid organization and why it is expected to strengthen into a tropical cyclone. On the other hand, also remember that ocean surface temperatures to the south of Mexico, and over the areas this future cyclone is expected to pass, are about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius above normal. This oceanic heat supports its strengthening. But it's important to discuss the following. If we use 110 degrees west longitude as a reference point, you'll see that west of that line, ocean temperatures are significantly cooler than normal, while to the east, the waters are much warmer. Why is this important? Because if the system follows the track currently shown by the models, it will move over areas with cooler than normal sea surface temperatures. This should create unfavorable conditions for it to remain a cyclone as it nears Mexico. However, if an entirely unexpected shift were to occur, pushing the system farther east, then it could benefit from warmer ocean surface temperatures, which might at least allow it to reach Mexico as a tropical storm. But again, let me repeat, this scenario is extremely unlikely at the moment. The most probable outcome is that it will follow the track shown by the model consensus. In fact, Let's now take a look at the projections from the global models. Let's start with the American model. Notice that by tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, it already shows a tropical storm, or tropical storm Alvin, maintaining a northwestward track and eventually turning more to the east and rightward toward parts of Jalisco, perhaps arriving as a weak tropical storm or a dissipated system. The key point from the American model is that it's one of the rightmost tracks, which is why it shows a weakened circulation that could bring some tropical depression strength wind gusts. On the other hand, the other models show a different scenario. For example, here we have the European model projection. It initially tracks the system northwestward and shows it strengthening into a moderate to strong tropical storm between Friday and Saturday. Then, as it moves over cooler ocean waters, you can see how it essentially dissipates between Sunday and Monday without directly impacting any Mexican states. The German model also aligns with this projection. It develops tropical storm Alvin but keeps it on a more westward or northwestward trajectory, 
eventually dissipating as it nears Jalisco. And just like the European model, this model also shows it dissipating before reaching land. Confidence in the forecast that the system will dissipate before reaching Mexico increases when we analyze the ensemble members of the American model, where nearly all of them, with the exception of only two, indicate that the future tropical storm Alvin will dissipate before making landfall in Mexico. Also, take a look at the ensemble members of the European model. All of them show this disturbance dissipating over the weekend, with no chance of moving into Baja California Sur or Jalisco as a tropical cyclone. That's why, for now, we remain confident that although the system will likely develop into a tropical cyclone, it appears it will move along a path that is unfavorable for strengthening. But that will be during the weekend, just in time for it to dissipate before reaching Mexico. So, for the moment, there's no need to worry. If any major changes occur in the forecast, I'll be here to keep you informed. I would like to talk about some of the effects this system could bring to certain states such as Colima, Jalisco, Nayarit, and Baja California Sur. Starting with rainfall totals, for example, the American model projects that between 75 to 100 millimeters, about 3 to 4 inches, of rain could fall in areas between Nayarit, Colima, and Jalisco. But keep in mind that the American model is the one showing the farthest eastward track. Meanwhile, the other models, including the European model, with a more westward track, keep the heaviest precipitation over Pacific waters, leaving limited chances of rain for areas such as Sinaloa, Baja California, Sur, Nayarit, Jalisco, and Colima. At the moment, tropical storm force winds are not expected. However, in the worst-case scenario shown by the American model with the more rightward trajectory, some tropical depression-strength wind gusts could affect the coast between Sinaloa and Nayarit. Still, this shouldn't cause major issues, as it would mostly mean a breezy day, and that's only if the less likely track shown by the American model actually happens. Lastly, I want to talk about the wave forecast, which could impact coastal areas of Michoacan, Colima, and Jalisco. For Michoacan, between Friday and Saturday, some wave heights could reach up to 3 to 5 meters, 10 to 16 feet. A bit farther northwest, along the coasts of Colima and Jalisco, maximum wave heights could reach between 5 to 6 meters, 16 to 20 feet, from Friday through Saturday. So please exercise caution if you plan to visit the beaches in the coming days, especially between Friday and Saturday. Well, that's all for this forecast update on the future tropical storm Alvin. We'll continue monitoring the system closely and we'll keep you updated if any important changes in the forecast occur. To make sure you don't miss any of these videos, I invite you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to click the red subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. Alright then, that's all for now, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.